All right, everybody. So um, it's been a while. I don't know for anybody that's keeping up with our videos. It's been a while since we had the uh, the ST on the channel, but um, unfortunately, it was out of out for the count for about a month. And uh, it was uh, I don't know if anybody else had this issue, but it was the uh, actual body control module that decided to fall. But everything's taken care of. But today we are going to be focusing on the front grill here. Uh, there's multiple videos out there that I've seen of people doing this. Uh, so the concept of it is you have the factory grill that has this like rectangular cutout right here. And that's all of the airflow that you, I don't know if it's kind of hard to see, but that's all of the airflow that you get with the, uh, the factory grill. See right here, it's all blocked off on the bottom and along the sides here. Fortunately enough, when we did the oil cooler for this car, uh, we mounted it in a spot where it can get the best uh, possible airflow right there. So if you can imagine having that much uh, blockage kind of affects the cooling efficiency of like the radiator, your intercooler, and in my case, the oil cooler as well. So what we're gonna do is take the grill off. It's pretty simple from what I've seen. I haven't actually tried to like yank it off, but we're gonna get the grill off. They said it's literally as easy as just pulling it. As you can see, it's like coming off just like that. So just give it a, a good yank all around all the edges just to get the grill off. And then we'll show you what we got going on behind there and give you an idea of how much airflow we're actually opening up when we clear out all of these, these holes and make them all, you know, make air be able to channel through all of it and make the grill actually functional. So yeah, we're gonna get this off and then we'll show you what's behind. Okay. okay, well there's the grill. And you have everything back behind. Um, I believe I'm gonna remove this entire section right here just because it's, eventually I'm gonna have a tubular front crash or a bash bar and that's gonna allow for even more airflow and get rid of the factory uh, uh, bash bar, which blocks a lot of airflow to the radiator. And my intercooler actually comes up to about like right here. So it'll open up some airflow to that as well and just allow more air to channel in this area. And I also managed to remove my, uh, well, it's not the hard, but I removed the uh, cowl here. And basically what that does is it allows more air Say you have all the air coming in through here, ch channeling in through here, and then it goes on top of the engine and then out the, where the cowl used to be. So it basically just influences more air to flow through the entire engine bay itself. And I also removed the sound deadening from the bottom of the hood just to open everything up. And then eventually I'll be getting some nice hood vents to help air escape even more. So all the whole goal of this entire you know, everything that I've done and what I'm doing to the grill here is basically just to promote more airflow, help cool the car because yeah, it's going to be track driven so it needs to be able to have efficient cooling. So with that being said, I don't know if I want to take up the bumper. I think I might just because I want to remove this little plastic piece here. It's not little, it's actually pretty big. We might be able to pull it and squeeze it out but we'll see. Um, but yeah, we'll get to getting this cut, this piece right here, and then start filing down the uh, back of the grill, which will open up all the holes from the back side. So yeah, it'll be fun, time consuming, but it'll be well worth it. So we went ahead and deleted that plastic piece from here. and. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to take the bumper off to get this piece off. I'm gonna see if I can work with it, maybe get it out, but I'll probably have to take the bumper off. But, I mean, you're not gonna see any of this because the grill's gonna be covering it, so, I mean, I didn't really care about how the finish turned out right here, but once we get this off, um, we can work on getting the whole backside right here all filed down. That way we have holes throughout the entire grill. We're going to be using a tiger disc. Oh yeah. Tiger point. Tiger disc. Whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. It's a bunch of, you know, sandpaper layered up on top of each other. And you put it on an angle grinder. 
and you go ham with it. That's how we're gonna go about it. Uh, I've seen different techniques using Dremels or you know a grinding wheel like like this one even, and it's just they just went at it. But I feel like this is gonna give a little bit more control with uh, the material that we're gonna be taking away, and then it's gonna be a lot faster than just using a Dremel for each individual hole. So yeah. We're gonna get to it, and then we'll get back to you when we make some progress. All right, so we've done plenty of videos where it involves taking the bumper off. I mean, if you have any issues taking the bumper off, I mean, you probably should know how to take it off. But um, we got it off, and just so you can have an idea of what we're dealing with with the cooling and the actual, you know, air channeling when we actually have the grill done, it'll be this entire opening that will allow air to go through it, which sucks with the factory bash bar because it's just so thick you see this it's just very thick and it's just very obstructive so in the very near future i'm going to be getting a uh, tubular bash bar so it'll you know instead of being this thick it'll actually be you know maybe even just as thick as this opening right here and it'll just be a bar it won't be a flat surface blocking all this air and everything so we'll mount this where the, uh, the new bash bar is and just you know go from there same with the intercooler mounting brackets we'll probably have to make new new ones of those but as you can see like my intercooler probably goes up to like another like well maybe one inch up here so once that's tubular it'll allow more air to, to hit that surface and the same with the radiator too but the main reason we wanted to get that off is because we needed to get this plastic piece which is literally just sitting right here or like this it's just bumper well, it's support just, up to the crash bar. It's literally like useless for what we're going to be doing. So, getting rid of that, and that's why we had to take the bumper off. But we're going to get to hollowing out the uh, grill, and hopefully, we can uh, not make too much of a mess and not make too much noise. But, yeah. Because we'll it's late. Yeah, it's pretty late. But we'll get to that, and then kind of just show you when we're actually doing it, just so you have an idea of what to look forward to if you actually do it yourself, so, yep. <laughs> so, I figured we would uh, save you guys the trouble and uh, not really show you the time consuming portion of grinding it and very loud and obnoxious part of grinding everything down, but uh, we discovered that the Tiger Paw wasn't really working uh, like we had thought. So we just switched to a conventional uh, you know, grinding wheel on the... Um, not a cutting wheel, the thick grinding wheel. It's a grinding wheel. wheel, it's not a cutting wheel. It's pretty thick, it's got some girth to it. And um, we decided to go with this just because it was actually biting into the plastic instead of just, you know, spreading it all, all around, melting and spreading it all over. So this is actually doing a really good job, as you can see. I haven't really worked too hard on it. I mean, it's been a little while, but, you know, the more you you know just keep going over it you kind of have you don't press down too hard but just kind of let the the grinding wheel do most of the work and eventually it'll wipe away that layer of plastic in this area and then expose these uh the honeycomb here and later once we're uh, finished getting every all the uh, plastic uh, out of the way we'll go through each hole and you know clean it up using a you know exacto knife or what have you file most file. likely and um, make it look really clean. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna keep continuing left and right uh, with the grinding wheel. And right hopefully it doesn't take too long for me to get all the way down to the honeycomb. So I have uh, finished uh, the grinding portion of uh, the entire grill shaving. Um, if you look at the pile right here, you can kind of get an idea of how much material actually does come off of the back. Now, it may look very rough from the, the back side. I don't know if you can see the detail of everything. But um, we're just going to work on getting all these little sections cleaned up. Uh, you can, After you grind it down to the point where you can kind of see the shape of the honeycombs, uh, you could just take like a flathead or just something to get inside and kind of pry up on all the the parts inside of the honeycomb and 
the plastic will kind of just work its way out. And you just kind of toss it in a, in a pile or just somewhere, maybe in a trash, trash can. But now that we're done with that, that just gives you an idea of what it looks like right there. So you're gonna have all the airflow of it and it's not gonna have any blockage at all. Oh, and then another thing to note, uh, when you're around the ST area, you don't really have to worry too much about um, the grinding portion right here because it's all kind of meshed together. But at the same time, you don't want to go ham on it just because, you know, that's a pretty important part of the, the grill. But yeah, we're just gonna clean it up. Um, I don't really think there's much else to say about it. Um, oh, these little pins on the, or the clips on the outside. Just be careful. I kind of nicked a couple, but it's not going to affect the the locking feature of them. You know, see how they have the little ridge right here that locks into the actual bumper. Um, it's not really gonna have a, a effect at all on that. But I'd like to mention that a common problem with the, the newer generation grills is that they like to pop out of the bumper slightly. And it's mostly from the top, so like if you just get these little clips right here and you heat them up, you can bend them upwards a little bit just to kind of lock them in place and then hold the bumper in a little bit more, or hold the grill in more securely. So we're gonna put the bumper back on. Uh, and actually too, just to mention real quick, we actually did take off the mud flaps. Uh, or Ben did. He took off the mud flaps while I was grinding them and I just like that look a little bit better just because, you know, mud flaps cause drag and it's not a rally car so, you know, there's not really a point to having the mud flaps if you're not going to be rallying the car. But I personally, I don't know why I bought the mud flaps. It was one of the first things I bought for the car. It was just that, you know, that time period we start modifying cars and it's like, oh, well, I'll just get the mud flaps but in the end, I didn't want them, so I took we took them off. And um, if any of you guys want them, though, hit us up. Oh yeah, if you want the mud flaps, they say ST on them. I mean, it's they're just you know they're not generic. They're uh, I think it's uh, JBR. I think that's who makes them. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to reduce the drag there, increase cooling because we're just trying to get ready for you know track use and all that stuff. So we're just trying to take the the mo as many steps as possible to get towards that you know, end goal without having to spend like a crazy amount of money. So this is a great way to save money. And you know, if you have the tools, it's definitely worth it because you get full functionality out of the actual, out of the grill while holding you know, the, the visual aspect of it. But we still have to get the tubular uh, bash bar. That's coming, but um, that'll definitely help with the cooling as well and the hood vents too, so. We're gonna put everything back together, show you guys how it looks with the uh, with the grill all shaved out. And it should look pretty cool. So yeah, we'll get everything back together right now. All right, so what you see right now, bumper's back on. Uh, it's pretty much a representation of what you're gonna see while the grill's on. But I'm gonna put it on right now. And you can really see how like an aftermarket bash bar would actually make it look a lot different. And the airflow you would get if you did have that. So the, the difference in the airflow if you had it. So I'm gonna put this back on. Let's go on from the bottom first. It's all cleared out. Um, like I said, it's gonna get a bash bar and it's gonna clean it up a lot. It's gonna be red bash bar back behind. It's gonna have like a metallic flake to it, maybe just red. But um, it'll definitely open up the front end of the car. I'm definitely gotta be glad we did this just because it's one step closer to you know, being ready for the track and having the cooling that we need. But next is gonna be the uh, actual hood vents, which are probably going to mount over right here, just because this is the easiest location to just get straight metal instead of having to go through any of these uh, support beams and the hood. 
But yeah, um, I think it looks. I'm not. I didn't really do it for looks, preferably, but. Um, some people, you know, they have like white STs and then the white uh, ba factory batch bar shows through and it just makes it look a little bit more aggressive, but I mainly did it just because it helps airflow, helps promote the air to go through the entire engine bay, so. Well, I hope uh, you enjoyed and I hope this kind of helped anybody thinking about doing it. Um, it is loud, it, it does take quite a long time and it does make a pretty big mess, but if you just have patience, you know, if you just need, you know how to finesse the, the grinder and not uh, take send off it through send it through one of the tabs, you should be good. And um, just clean everything up. And when you get it all shaved down, make it all nice and clean, shave out all the inside and then have a fully functional, breathable grill for your focus. So yeah, thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to comment. And uh, let us know if you want have any ideas for any videos that you want us to make, you know, regarding this car, the Damon's car with his Fiat, uh, Ben's car with his EG, or his uh, BRZ. Uh, we are doing... Or the 944. Or Eddie's 944. Sorry, Eddie. I didn't mean to leave you out, but I still love you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we still are doing the engine build, which is turned into a desk at this point. But... His name's Todd. <laughs> Uh, we are doing that still. Uh, I still need to. I already got the rings. I still need to balance the uh, the rods and pistons, and then from there we measure uh, uh, bearing clearances and all that stuff using plastic gauge. But we'll get into that in later videos and whenever I feel like you know attempting to do all that stuff myself, which because I am doing it myself. So uh, I'm really happy to have the car back, and I'm glad I changed up the look a little bit with the lack of mud flaps and then did the. Uh, the grill. I've been wanting to do that for a very long time. So next is going to be for the for the cooling is going to be either the uh, bash bar or the vents for the hood. So definitely stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing all that ourselves, and even the bash bar. We're fingers crossed. We're going to be able to fab it up with um, our buddy Alex. He's the one who did all my exhaust work and who helped us with the oil cooler with the welding of the two fittings. So hopefully we can get that situated with the front end. And yeah, we uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, comment, subscribe, uh, like if you uh, liked it. <laughs> and uh, we will see you in the next video. Well, I'm really impressed with the way you know when you're cops and don't don't mix. You're gonna stay late, but shit the strawberry shortcake. Oh.